that tree is is proliferating. Yeah. That that's like the aftermath of the forest fire. A wild rose flourishes in the fire's aftermath. Jack pine seedlings grow next to a log. A young brown pine, commonly found in the shade, thrives on the little Sioux burn site. With its broad leaves open towards the sun, a new aspen sucker stands against the dark back, stark background of fire blackened tree trunks. Aspens grow quickly when where flames have devastated the woods tw twenty years before. Heber birch is a woodland thicket with mountain maple shrubs resplendent in their autumn colors of orange, yellow, and scarlet. Fall. In shadow of most of the day, a white spruce sapling enjoys its brief exposure to sunlight. Vulnerable to fire, balsams crowd fire-resistant 100-year-old white pines. Without a blaze, the firs may well survive the, game, the aging pines. Mm. Fire scars, almost 100 years old, old mar 200-year-old red pines at far up is, is relatively lame. Unmarked are offspring of the hardly giants. The contours of a limestone ledge on Hudson's Bay's western shore reflect millennia of polishing and erosion by glaciers, sea, and rain. Cabrian lava spewed from the earth a billion years ago formed this sheer cliff at Palisade Head, Lake Superior. Hmm? See the fog? Warm type of North Country panoramia, dense woods of conifers interspade with lake waters unfolds in this of Superior or National Forest. Such lake formations resulted when meltwater filled the hollows dug by glaciers or when drainage backed up behind their debris. Mm. Prince Belgium moss and green feather moss grow atop the bare granite of the Canadian Shield near Lake Superior. See? That's red moss. A late 19th century voyager in working garb typical of the period was sketched for the magazine's Harper weekly by the American artist Frederick Remington on a northwards trip. This is Frederick Remington. Photographs painted by the early Northwoods Indians on a cliff face at Hegman Lake, Minnesota, Include a godlike figure and forest animals. The artists use the earth's own pigments to adorn the sheer granite walls. See? As the bowsman watches for dangerous rocks, voyagers run a canoe the, the so-called Montreal Canoe, down a savage stretch of white water. The few passengers shown probably include the painter and her husband. The others are presumably Hudson's Bay Company officials. See? A 
A brigade of Montreal canoes moves up to the mast. In this work, which she entitled Canoes in the Fog Lake Superior, Miss Hopkins and her spouse are seated in the nearest canoe. She has her sketchbook prepared while Mr. Hopkins